Hello YouTube viewers, please like, share, and subscribe, and most importantly, get ready for the Lord's return. Thank you. The White House brings out its intel and national security chiefs in a bid to show it means business about Russia's attacks on America's democracy. The director of national intelligence says what the president won't say, that Moscow is right now trying to interfere in the election process, aiming to weaken and divide the United States ahead of the midterm elections. I'll speak with Congressman Ruben Gallego of the Armed Services Committee. And our correspondents and specialists are also standing by with full coverage. But first, let's go straight to our Chief White House Correspondent, Jim Acosta. Jim, given the President's dismissive rhetoric for a long time about Russia's election attacks, what's behind this latest White House display? Well, if the White House uh, try to show the world today that it's serious about stopping Russian interference in U.S. elections, but the top administration officials who insisted they are on the case had to grapple with one key question that kept coming up over and over again, whether the president takes the threat to American democracy seriously. The president has made it clear that... It was a show of force as the White House sent out top administration officials from the director of national intelligence to the national security advisor to the FBI director to assure the American people they are determined to combat Russian interference in U.S. elections. We continue to see a pervasive messaging, messaging campaign by Russia to try to weaken and divide the United States. Director of National Intelligence Dan Coats insisted the order is coming from the top. The president has specifically directed us to make the matter of the election meddling and securing our election process a top priority. Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen described a grave threat. Our democracy itself is in the crosshairs. Free and fair elections are the cornerstone of our democracy, and it has become clear that they are the target of our adversaries who seek, as the DNI just said, to sow discord and undermine our way of life. But all of the tough talk stood in stark contrast with the president's own past statements, most notably his summit with Vladimir Putin in Finland. Mr. Trump declined to confront the Russian president over Moscow's meddling. I hold uh, both countries responsible, and I think we're all uh, to blame. The president has often diminished the Russian threat, repeatedly saying other unnamed countries could be interfering as well. I accept our intelligence community's conclusion that Russia's meddling in the 2016 election took place. Could be other people also. The officials gathered in the briefing room were asked about the disconnect. I'm not in a position to either understand fully or uh, talk about what happened at Helsinki. Then there are the president's tweets, accusing top FBI officials of being part of a witch hunt, a charge echoed by Press Secretary Sarah Sanders. He's certainly expressing the frustration that he has uh, with the level of corruption that we've seen from people like Jim Comey, Peter Strzok, Andrew McCabe. Uh, there's a reason that the president's angry. Asked about that, FBI Director Chris Wray pushed back with Sanders in the room. I can assure the American people that the men and women of the FBI, starting from the director all the way on down, are gonna follow our oaths and do our job. The White House was also asked about its continued attacks on the press after the president's daughter, Ivanka Trump, told Axios members of the media are not the enemy of the people, they are fake, as her father often says. I've certainly received my fair share of um, reporting on me personally that I know not to be fully accurate. But no, I do not feel that the media is the enemy of the people. Given multiple opportunities to back Ivanka and not President Trump, Sanders refused to say the press is not the enemy. His own daughter acknowledges that, and all I'm asking you to do, sir, is to acknowledge that right now and right here. I, I appreciate your passion. I share it. Um, I've addressed this question. I've addressed my personal feelings. I'm here to speak on behalf of the president. He's made his comments clear. Now, each of the top officials at the White House today laid out various task forces and initiatives that have been launched to defend against Russian attacks in the upcoming midterm elections. The big question, of course, is whether any of those efforts will ultimately be successful. Wolf, we may not get that answer until well after the November elections are over. Well, all right, Jim Acosta at the White House, thank you very much. Let's bring in our crime and justice reporter, Shima Prokopez. Uh, Shima, what are you learning about how the FBI is now trying to investigate this Russian threat? Look, I, I think the FBI director took a, a much more serious, went further today than he has before in talking about 
uh, this threat. I think it's also important to understand that for him to go before the White House to stand on that podium uh, and to answer questions is certainly significant as well. Look, for the FBI, this is a top priority. Uh, the concern is that uh, there are Russians in this country that they are tracking, uh, that are in our institutions, are in our banks, uh, are working at different companies, think tanks, all working to gather intelligence, gather information, much like we saw with the woman who was recently arrested here in Washington, D.C., uh, Maria Butina, uh, for uh, working for the Russians. This is a major concern uh, that has been ongoing for the FBI for quite some time. But certainly people inside the FBI feel, given what happened in 2016, there is a certain escalation uh, that is almost touching, or perhaps touching, every FBI office in this country, uh, the FBI director explaining today how each of these offices is handling these investigations. Yes, but you know there's a whole school of thought at the FBI and elsewhere in the U.S. government that says the only thing the Russians are going to understand, if they're doing this to the United States, the United States is going to have to do something to Russia. Uh, leak, for example, uh, a lot of emails, Russian emails involving Putin's money. For example, that's something they might understand. Of course, that, that is something they might, they might have said. When you talk to people, you know, they, there's concern that they're in our grid systems. And then you talk to some people that say that we are in their systems, right? Certainly that's, we've heard the president sort of hint at this, that we do this to other people as well. Um, that is an action, certainly, that the intelligence community, for all we know, may have taken. It's not something that they will ever talk about publicly, certainly what the CIA does. But look, I think the concern uh, by the FBI is certainly much more serious. They are taking it much more seriously. They've always taken it seriously. But I think the fact that they're talking about it sends a different message. And the other thing that I want to point out, Wolf, is that for the first time uh, we've done some reporting on this, is that the FBI director today said that they are also investigating uh, illegal campaign financing that may have come from foreign nationals, right? And, and that has to do with some of the reporting that we've done about Russian oligarchs who may have been using cutouts here in the U.S. to surreptitiously donate money to campaigns. Certainly this has come up with the whole NRA stuff. Um, so that is something new. So we have two significant pieces of information from the FBI here today that this is touching every field office. And there's also money now they're looking at that may have gone to campaigns. And tell our viewers uh, who may not be familiar with the word what you mean by cutouts. So that there are some of these oligarchs, uh, which we've done stories on, says that uh, oligarchs were giving money to U.S. citizens, people who would be allowed to donate, it could be relatives, it could be people they're associated with, that they were giving money to those people, and then they, in turn, were then donating it to various campaigns. Yeah, but if they find out the money was originating from Russian oligarchs, and they were, the, they were the cutouts, that is a crime. That is a crime, and oligarchs, time and time again, we have seen, they are part of this Russian influence investigation. Uh, we know that oligarchs have been stopped, who have traveled to this country, uh, who have been stopped and questioned by the FBI, and have not returned since. Uh, this is a significant development, I think, the fact that the FBI has admitted that they are now looking at this. Yeah, good point, uh, Shimon. Excellent reporting as usual. Thank you. Uh, there's more breaking news. CNN has learned that the special counsel, Robert Mueller, is pushing for an interview with the Russian billionaire and his pop star <coughs> son who encouraged Donald Trump Jr. to meet with a Russian lawyer promising dirt on Hillary Clinton. CNN's Kara Scanella has been digging into this story for us. Kara, what are you learning? Well, that's right. So we've learned that the special counsel, Robert Mueller's team, is still pressing to interview Emin Agalara. He is the pop star son of Aras Agalara. They are a Russian family of Azerbaijani descent who had worked with the Trumps to uh, put on the Miss Universe pageant in Moscow in 2013. So what we've learned today is that Mueller's team is still trying to interview both Emin and Aras Agalara, who spoke to his lawyer today, and here's what he's told us about these discussions. Uh, the attorney Scott Balber said that we have been having conversations with the special counsel for a potential interview for nearly a year. Those conversations are not new, they are ongoing. We haven't reached an agreement yet on any terms of such an interview, and I can't predict whether we will reach agreement or not. Now, the Aguilar's relationship with the Trump or not, you know, it wasn't a, just a chance encounter around this June 2016 meeting at Trump Tower, which Emin Aguilera, the son, had um, instigated through Donald Trump Jr. Uh, Aras Aguilera, as I mentioned, uh, worked with the Trumps to put on the Miss Universe pageant there, and his son Ammon is a pop star who has recently released a new video that is 
Some have taken to be mocking the special counsel's investigation by poking fun at the, the elements of this investigation, potential Russian meddling in the election. Uh, so what, what this tells us now that Mueller is still trying to set up this interview and they're still having these negotiations is that the special counsel's team is very much interested in the contours of that Trump Tower meeting and perhaps other connections and relationships between Donald Trump and Russian oligarchs and um, Russian investments. Uh, Kara, there uh, are, as you know, uh, a lot of questions about whether then-candidate Donald Trump knew about that meeting with the Russians at Trump Tower uh, in New York. What are you hearing? Well, Wolf, last week we reported that sources had told us that Michael Cohen was saying, and he is Trump's former personal attorney, that Michael Cohen was saying that he had knowledge or information that Trump may have known about the meeting with the Russians before it occurred. Now, we asked Scott Valber, uh, the Agu Aguilaros attorney, about that, and he told us that the Aguilaros were not aware and had no reason to believe that President knew the Trump Tower meeting was happening or that it happened before it was publicly disclosed. Uh, so now, of course, Cohen has, has, is claiming that he has some knowledge of that, according to our sources, but at least the Aguilaros are saying through their attorney that they have no information to shed on whether Trump knew about the meeting beforehand. Well, and it's interesting, we're showing our viewers uh, this video, uh, uh, Kara, it, it, it's interesting that uh, the president, uh, Aguilaros, obviously, Michael Cohen, they're all featured uh, in this video there. You see Michael Cohen in the back of that clip right over there. So it's, it, it's all so, so intriguing, Kara Spinell. Thanks very much for that report. Uh, joining us now, uh, Democratic Congressman Ruben Gallego of Arizona. He's a member of the House Armed Services Committee. Congressman, thanks for joining us. But let, let, let's get right to your reaction to the news that the FBI Director Christopher Wray, uh, according to Christopher Wray, the FBI's Foreign Influence Task Force uh, is now working across all 56 FBI field offices around the United States. How significant is this development in the overall Russia probe? A great, uh, it's a really a great development. I mean, first of all, it's a great development uh, for democracy. We need to make sure that the American public understands that their vote is sacred, it will be counted, uh, and it's not going to have uh, foreign influence. Uh, I think it needs to be backed up, though, by actions by the Republican uh, uh, House and Senate by actually putting money in election integrity uh, uh, bills uh, and funding actual uh, programs, which we have not seen happen. Is it possible, Congressman, for the national security apparatus uh, in the federal government uh, to counter this threat while the president himself continues to undermine that effort with his own rhetoric? Well, the best way to actually counter any type of threat is to actually create a deterrent. And the problem with what we have right now is that we have a president that's not part of the, our deterrent package. You have, you know, uh, our apparatus when it comes to the National Security Council and everybody else that are, you know, pushing hard against uh, Russia and Russian interference, but the president comes out uh, all the time, basically undermines that. And that is where we're going to find ourselves in, the tr in trouble, because right now, what we, what I believe is Russia is going to take in calculations uh, and start figuring out that, you know what, we could probably still get away with it because they're going to have President Trump at least there for two more years uh, to make sure that, the, you know, the blowback is not as, as harsh. You know, it's interesting that the National Security Agency director seemed to suggest today that he's been authorized to strike back against foreign influencers, influencers with offensive cyber operations. Is that possible that the president is taking this threat more seriously behind the scenes, even if his public rhetoric clearly doesn't match? Well, if it's, if it's possible, uh, yes, it's possible. Uh, I hope actually that is what is actually occurring. I would love nothing more than Donald Trump to start standing up to Russia, to Putin, and to their interference here. I think that'd be a great thing for this country. Um, but it, he needs to match his actions publicly too. Uh, the Russians are, have always been, whether they're Soviet Union, whether they're Tsars, or whether they're now whatever kind of oligarchy Russia, Russians that they are now, they only understand power, uh, and power projected by the person and the head of government. So Trump needs to actually follow up with actual words and rhetoric and try not to undermine uh, Congress, especially when we try to pass sanctions against them. Well, offensive cyber operations, what does that say to you? What does that mean? Well... I don't want to go into details, but from at least the briefings that we've had in, on the Armed Services Committee, there are tons of ways uh, that uh, we could basically create a deterrence for them to actually be uh, uh, the Russians to actually stop them. And now, you know, nothing that I, I, I'm, I'm going to say is, is a secret or anything like that, but for example, there has been conversations about what's called doxing, where we actually release, uh, you know, how much the, all the oligarchs and Putin have stolen 
uh, from the Russian people, which is you know upward of billions of dollars. That kind of uh, threat you know, usually is a good deterrent for many of these um, you know uh, nefarious actors, especially oligarchs and, and big government officials. But, and you think the U.S. government should specifically uh, tell the Russians if you continue to interfere in the U.S. democratic process, this is what's going to happen to you? Uh, yes, I've actually always been extremely.